just going to give a quick demonstration of how to use my application for uh, incorporating Windows Backup. We basically consist of two tabs, one labeled uh, Weekly System Image Backup, and the other one is Daily File Backup. Now keep in mind this is both for Windows 7 and Windows 8, only for 64-bit at this time. So I'll come back to the Weekly System Image Backup. By default, Windows, uh, the native backup, whether it's Windows 7 or Windows 8, will only create the one system image. If you want to create subsequent system images, unless you go to the trouble to rename them and or move them to a different location, it will overwrite them. Or in Windows 7's case, uh, a little more sophisticated, it will incrementally change the system image. This was a problem for me. Um, as I'm a bit of a stickler for redundancy. So I've uh, wanted to incorporate the possibility for users to select a number of uh, system images um, based on the capacity of the external hard drive that they're choosing to use for their backups. I've also incorporated a nice feature that um, I've always wanted, and that is the ability to easily restore files from the system images that I've created. So this is what this one's for. In actual fact, I'll, I'll just quickly, while I'm here, I'll go through it. So a system image is basically, um, has a file extension of BHDX in Windows 8 or BHD in Windows 7. So in this case, I'm using Windows 8 to give this demonstration. So I'll uh, proceed. Um, you can see this is the C drive Windows backup and you see here MV host, which is the name of the PC, MV host. Okay, so this is the folder that contains the system image. The, these other folders are basically system images that were created a week apart from each other. And they are, this is just a, an archive of the historical system images. Okay, so now what I'm wanting to do is uh, simply select um, a, a file to restore back to my uh, my system. So I go into this uh, folder and we have here two VHDXs, you can see. Now which one do we select? The one that's typically the largest will be the one that uh, is an image of your system drive or your system partition in this case. The other partition on your system drive is the recovery partition which you can see over here, recovery. So I'm going to open that. So what will happen is Windows Explorer will open and you can see here I've got uh, five, five drives. Now, you've just seen that, a new one appear. Okay, so it just happens to have the same, which we've expected, the same name as the system uh, drive, Windows. So this is Windows, Windows. So you can even see here that it's the same size in terms of gigabytes. All right, all I need now to do is navigate to the file that I want to um, restore. As an example, you can just simply say copy and you paste it back, okay? Uh, so this wasn't um, easily achievable with the uh, with Windows uh, backup in, uh, in the native versions of Windows 7 and Windows 8. You needed to use the command line to to do what I've just done there. So once you're finished uh, restoring the files and folders that you you desire, then you simply unmount. Click this unmount VHD. Okay. All right. But even prior to uh, creating any backups, especially the system image backup, it's important that we know how, in the event of a catastrophe, a hard drive failure, for example, that we know how to get our system back up and running, uh, to be able to boot it, uh, to access the recovery tools necessary to restore our system image. And for that, I've placed here Windows Recovery Media Creation. So in Windows
Windows 8, uh, the possibility is for simply to create a USB flash drive, an image recovery uh, media. In Windows 7, USB flash drive and DVD will uh, uh, be the options. So you would simply see, uh, cre create and follow the instructions. Okay, so this is a uh, instructional prompt that I've included. So basically it's saying that um, you, there is the possibility to tick uh, copy the recovery petition uh, from the PC to the recovery drive. You can uh, include this, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, if you're a stickler for redundancy, which I am, then you probably would, and I have I have created mine this way. So, but uh, for the purpose of restoring a, a system image in the event of uh, uh, you know a failure, then this isn't necessary. So, um, okay. So I'm just going to click uh, here. So say okay. And then you just uh, proceed uh, with next, next. Uh, you select the, the USB drive that um, uh, you, you want to create your uh, Windows recovery media on and uh, follow through to the, the, its conclusion. Be sure to test it, in uh, which case uh, you may need to uh, change the BIOS settings uh, of your computer. You'll have to refer to your uh, PC's uh, instruction manual further details or simply go to YouTube and uh, type in BIOS boot order. Okay. Okay. Um, now we spoke earlier about redundancy. So the idea is of course that you can create a number of desired uh, images based on the capacity of the storage uh, device that you're using. Here in my case I'm using three plus one current image. Now, uh, here, email notifications. The idea behind this is, well, I've never ever met anybody who's prepared to sit and wait and watch for their system image to complete. So given that I wanted this to be as hands-off as possible, yet at the same time in as informative as possible, I, I included the possibility for users to receive a notification email of the status of the backup. The status meaning did it complete successfully or maybe it failed for some reason in which case uh, you, you have to attempt it again by clicking create backup now now it's prompting to ask if we want the pc to sleep after the backup is completed in this case i'll just say no now it's uh, this is the archive management so it's asking if we want to delete system images in excess of three, which is corresponds to the um, the number of archives we have uh, created. Um, in this case, I'm going to say cancel because I, I won't proceed with the backup right now. Anytime you do change settings here, um, you would need to save the settings for them to be retained by the application. Um, also, a quick comment here, uh, enable schedule, right? So you don't have to have this schedule uh, on a weekly basis. You don't have to enable it. You can create uh, your backups manually simply by clicking create backup now. So uh, by ticking here, it enables the schedule and it will automatically create up to uh, four system images with uh, one current image and three historical images all made a week apart from each other. Made sure that when it created a new image and the full complement of four images that was already in place that it would remove the oldest image. Uh, I hope that's easy to imagine. Now for those periods, the interim between each weekly system image backup, we need to also include regular backups of the files that are, uh, are we deem important that have changed. Okay, so for that, we have um, the daily file backup. So as I'm using Windows 8 for this demonstration, Windows 7, uh, unfortunately, is not supported. <laughs> uh, so with Windows 8, we have uh, what's called Windows File History. 
is uh, the built-in uh, uh, daily backup for for file uh, backups. Uh, in win case of Windows 8, you can it can be created more more frequently. If you need to enable it, you click uh, Enable Windows File History Backup. So it, it by default will open up uh, the file history window, and you will see here that it says File History is is on. And the last copy was made at 9:30 uh, today. Okay, so here you can switch it off if you if you don't want it you can also exclude folders but by default the uh, files and folders that are backed up are inside the library e.g. your video library your documents library your music library and pictures library uh, the desktop folders and files uh, include contacts and favorites okay okay I just quickly want to visit advanced settings for file history so we can see here that uh, uh, for, m for myself, um, I'm having files copied every hour. This is the default setting. You can, of course, change that to as frequently as every 10 minutes. Uh, cool. The size of the offline cache. This is the disk space that uh, is used. Um, there's a percentage of it. It's using the default setting here. How long do I want to keep the versions? Because it does create a chronological backup of the files. This is my preferred setting until space is needed. So upon creating new backups, if it has utilized the full 5%, it will remove older file backups. So you can select what's most appropriate for you in this case. Just close that window there. Now, the last uh, step, of course, is the ability to be able to restore files in Windows file history. So we can go click on this button. It takes us directly to uh, the home of file history where we can um, select uh, for example the music um, and you can simply right click restore restore to give you the option to navigate right to where you'd like to restore it okay so you can also go back to previous uh, times Okay. Obviously, this particular file here was created um, on the twenty-fifth. Okay. That's really about it. I hope that whoever uses it finds it useful, and I welcome feedback. Uh, so, if you if you feel inclined, you can uh, come to here and contact me here. Okay. Take me to my website. And okay. All right. Thank you very much.